All right, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, we want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahushai, Bahashem, Chakwadash. We'd also like to give double honors to our elders and apostles of Great Millstone that do root well, and we'd like to say peace and salutations to the Lord's elect, the hopeful elect in one third, and uh, Lord's will, these uh, sit downs, these modern day epistles are edifying to you, brothers, and you few sincere sisters. All right, to you, we say shalom. And the Wadiya Bashim Al Shai, Bashim Rakakwadash, for giving us the inspiration uh, to do this uh, lesson. And as we continue, this is our weekly sit down. And uh, right now, we are in the book of Acts, and um, we're going to be uh, continuing on. And right now, we're in chapter 15, um, and uh, pretty much just going through the entirety of uh, the book of Acts and breaking it down correctly, uh, going into uh, history, context, geography. And uh, linking it all with uh, the truth that we now know that um, we are the Hebrew Israelites. And we are also the Gentiles that Apostle Paul went to uh, in the book of Acts and in the letters that we read, which today have, um, you know, been taken, hijacked, uh, broken down incorrectly, misused. And um, now um, Esau has attempted to replace the people of Yahweh Bashem El Shai with himself when that's not actually the case. So... Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start right off. Uh, the brother Krat Dezah is going to read. <clears throat> and we're going to start right off in Acts 1 and uh, go through the chapter in its entirety while bringing out uh, edifying information with precepts coinciding uh, with this chapter. You got it, brother. All right. This is the book of Acts, chapter 15 and verse 1. And it says, And certain men which came down from Judea mm -hmm. taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses... Ye cannot be saved. Right. So immediately right here, uh, as we continue to read, we see that there was a issue uh, that was uh, surrounding the truth. And this was because there is a, um, you know, an, an, a, an implosion, explosion of uh, prophecy taking place. And that's ultimately Yahweh Shai being that um, that sacrifice. Let's go to Hebrews uh, 10 and 5 real quick. Gotcha. All right. So we now understand Okay, coming back to our commonwealth that um, just living by the law is not what um, is pleasing to our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because immediately it makes me think about um, Abraham. Abraham wasn't living by the law when the Lord um, called him. Right. Like us as Gentiles, we weren't living by the law when the Lord called us. Right. So the problem is you have this pushback by Israelites that are uh, just law practicing Torah keeping Israelites running into faith uh, believing Israelites that may be unlearned in the law, you know, uh, not as um, well versed in it. So what we see even today is there are Israelites that will use in particular precepts to try to negate faith and push the law to you more than the Lord. Right. And this was going on with new believers. Okay, um, Hebrews 10 and 5. Yes, this is the book of Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. Which we can start at 4. Uh, Hebrews 10 and verse 4, and it says, For it is not possible. You know what? Start just at 1, matter of fact. Gotcha. Just so we can yeah. all get the understanding. Yeah, we have Th to. That's all it is. Because we, we live by the law, but we found out now that we can live by the law under grace. And when the law is broken, the sin has already been forgiven by the body of Yahweh Shai. That's right. Okay, that's all it is. It's very simple. All right, you got it. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 10 and verse 1. It says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come. Yep, just like with Moses when he came down after receiving all that information, it said he did this after the pattern. Right. So right now we're just um, living uh, according to the pattern that was given. And when you want to think about the law, you know, that was actually um, from the beginning when it says, let us make man in our image. OK, male and female created he them. That's right. All right. So we have been designed to do the will of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai. Let, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So from the beginning, uh, man, all right, starting with the chosen line, was set up to be the um, authority of the standard of living. Right. OK. Right. The law is a standard of living of how we conduct ourselves, how we operate when things happen with human affairs. Right. You know, that's why it says don't um, covet thy wife. And, right. You know, those are things that um, we now with within ourselves spiritually designed. We do those things unbeknownst to ourselves. 
Like, real quick, let's go to Romans 2 and 14. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yep. This is the book of Romans, chapter 2 and verse 14. And it says, oh, excuse me. And it says, for when the Gentiles. Which these Gentiles are what? Israelites. Right. When these Jakes, you know, when those New Yorkers, okay, when this group of people, okay, and might I add, God fearing. All right, because let's do a quick experiment. Let's go right here. Let's put this in. Let's go like this. Let's put God fearing Gentile. Let's see what pops up. Okay. So right there in the book oh, a few times. So when we also, the one thing that we're learning too, as we continue to read, look, Cornelius popped up first. Right. One thing that we continue to see is it, Esau or Christians just blanket the word Gentile. But what we find out is in the scriptures, it says uh, the, the, the Gentiles that are bearing my name or the God fearing Gentile. So there's right. a there is a uh, implication of talking about someone specifically amongst right. this people group. Right. That's like, right. Exactly. That's why it uh, says like the the, uh, the Gentiles that believe. Exactly. The Gentiles have faith. Exactly. Right. Because even now, um, not all of the Lord's people is going to accept like right now in Acts 15. They don't accept Yahweh Shai. Right. They're thinking it's just by the law. OK, That's so right. right here, Acts 17 and 17, it says, so he reasoning in the synagogue with the Jews and the God fearing mm -hmm. Gentiles. So um, one thing that I like to use now, since you want to use replacement theology, let's use uh, um, uh, hypothetically. OK, since you want to right? let's hypothetically start adding these notions that you're saying are true. So if you're a God fearing Gentile. When you come up to camp then you need to listen to what we're saying right. and not interrupt us in the midst of our service reading out of the scriptures. See? So you're not even acting in, in uh, accordance to the parameter you're supposed to be keeping as a God-fearing Gentile while being in the midst of Israelites. Right. See? That makes so sense. Just wanted to bring that quick point. Let's go back to Romans. Back in Romans 2 and 14. And it says, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law... Look, look. For when nations... See, so look, nations. OK, so who amongst these nations? Look, I'll prove it real quick. You go you go to Revelations one uh, and you go to ver um, chapter seven. OK, let's go to uh, Revelations seven. And I think it's eight or nine. Gotcha. Yep, it's nine. right here. Yeah. So it said nations, right? Revelation seven and nine. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations. So here it is. Even in Acts, it's saying these Gentiles or these nations, right? Then it says, but it, within a nation is what? A kindred. And those kindred are people and those people have languages. Right. So who of these people or who of these kindreds within this nation is God fearing? As they would say, right? So when you go into the blue letter for the word kindred right here, it says in the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch, Jacob. Mm. So we have to accept this as a part of a possibility being true, which we know it is. But what we're telling you is, look, you may have this understanding, but we're telling you this is our understanding and here's the evidence for it. Right. It's a big difference. So now back in Romans, we now understand for when the Gentiles or when the nations or the kindred within that nation, read it again. It says for when the Gentiles yep. or the kindred in the nation, read it like that. Okay. For when the kindreds in the nation, which have not the law. Because why? They, they, um, were, they were cast off. They were br brought among the heathen. Yep. They were living in uh, uh, other lands. You know, they were in Macedonia. They were in uh, Crete. You know, how many times in the scriptures on Apostle Paul's journey does he come across a synagogue of Jews while he's in Thessalonica? Multiple times. Multiple times. Multiple times. So you cannot sit here when we go into the aspect of Gentiles and try to say it's not Israelites because on Paul's journey, he constantly ran into Israelites and they had synagogues. How'd they get there? Mm -hmm. When they get there? And just like the letters, those letters was uh, directly handed to those Israelites. Yeah, they weren't handed to heathen. No, nope. you know those yep. th those letters were written by Paul, who's an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin, to other fellow Israelites. Yep. 
And it says back in Romans 2 and 14, it says, uh, which have not the law do by nature, the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Exactly. So we are spiritually designed to do the right thing. Right. This is why we have a conscience. This is why it says he made a vessel of honor and of dishonor. This is why someone can blatantly lie to you. And verse five, oh no, verse, uh, sorry, verse one, again, one yep. Hebrews 10 and verse one. And it says, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of, of the things can never, can never with the sacrifices, which they offer year by year continually, make the comers there to, they're unto perfect. Right. So it's being, it's being told unto us right here that the law that we were given was given to us as an image or a shadow of what's to come. This is why Yahweh Shai said, I give you better promises. Right. Okay. Because what proves it's a shadow is um, we're now getting the uh, eternal life where we won't sin no more. So now there's no need for us to be warned if uh, for disobedience, here's the curses. Right. The new covenant doesn't come with curses because we're not going to go off. So there's not going to need to be room for a position of penalty upon us if we break this. Right. Makes sense. And it says, uh, verse 2, for then would they not have ceased to be offered. And that proves we're not under the new covenant right now because we still got to repent. Yeah. It says repent, the kingdom's nigh. Why would we need to repent still if we're under the new covenant? Right. It says, for when they, for, for, when, for then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Right, because every year there's this atonement taking place, and every year you're gonna say, "Why? Why is there an atonement happening? Shh, right. shh this is for our sin." Right. The, in, the, in our kingdom, it says, "I'll remember they sin no more." See, so that's what we want to get to, and this is what Apostle Paul is conveying to our people, to us, because there was a pushback of the law over the Lord. And then there was an attack on new believers that all they had was faith, right? All yep. they had was faith, which now we'll hold Galatians going back to Acts 15. All they had was faith, and then men were attacking that. That's right. Okay, you don't want someone to attack your, your faith. Okay, let's uh, back in Hebrews. Back in Hebrews chapter uh, 10 and verse 4. And it reads, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Mm. Wherefore, when he cometh unto the world, he said, The sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body mm. hath thou prepared me. Boom. So right here, it's letting us know that there was a body that was given for us, which right. proves Isaiah 9 and 6. Unto us a son is given, right. and the government is upon his shoulders. This is what Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, this is what he was quoting on John 3, 16. Isaiah 9 and 6, for unto us a child is born, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. See? Uh, unto us a son is given, and the government, which is the same uh, government, is found in the word world in the Greek in John 3, 16, okay? Shall be upon his shoulder, uh, which just like the high priest would bear two onyx stones on his shoulders. Let me get that real quick. Let's just, let's just get everything that is oh, yeah. being given to us. Right, yep. Exodus 28, the garment of the priest... When you go down into it, see how it says uh, two shoulder pieces, okay, right here. And it says, uh, Exodus 28, 7, it shall have the two shoulder pieces thereof joined at the two edges thereof, and so it shall be joined together, and the curious girdle of the ephod, which is upon it, shall be on the same, according to the work thereof, even of gold, a blue and a purple, and scarlet and fine twine linen, and thou shalt take two onyx stones and grave on them the names mm. of the children of Israel, six of their names on one stone and on the other six names uh, of the rest of the other stone, according to their birth. Uh, and it says, um, with the work of an engraver in stone, like the engraver of a signet, thou shalt engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel Thou shalt make them to be set in ouches of gold, mm. and thou shalt put the two stones upon the shoulders of the ephod for stones of memorial unto the children of Israel, 
and Aaron shall bear their names before the Lord upon his two shoulders for a memorial. Right. That was a shadow of things to come being Yahweh Shai bearing our sins upon his shoulders as it was told in Isaiah 53, but it was also told to us in Isaiah 6. So it was letting us know that he was going to bear our sins. Yes, and right. as our high priest, this was a shadow of things to come. Okay? So where are we at? Uh, back in uh, Acts. Yeah. Back in Acts 15 and in verse uh, 2. And it reads, When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them. Yeah, they got in an argument. Let's go into it. When you go down into uh, NIV, this brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and mm. debate with them. See? So this brought up a problem. Just like now, like, um, this is repetition. We, the, the, it's the Holy Spirit that's inspiring us to do this, to keep going into Because you know what's coming? We're getting ready to witness actual Gentiles that look like other nations coming to us believing. Yeah. And majority of you Hebrew Israelite camps out there are going to deny those sheep. Yep. See? Let's keep going. And it says, uh, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders mm -hmm. about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, mm -hmm. declaring the the conversion of the Gentiles. Right, declaring mm -hmm. the opening. Right. Because back then it was a very strict uh, culture. Okay, you had we're talking about Aaron's sons got put to death for writing the, the, the for lighting the wrong incense. Yeah. You know, we're talking about. Um, uh, um, I believe a man got put to death for picking up sticks yeah. and then yep. we had to get fringes put upon us. So you're seeing people being accepted that ain't wearing fringes yep. that have no registry. <laughs> you know, when you really look at it, oh, they're not on the 12 tribe chart. Yep. So then you're like, hey, um, this is new. Right. You know, I got a quick one for you. OK, this is the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 19. But I say, did not did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. Right. See, they're no people. Right. They're amongst the nation, but they themselves are no people. Because let's make this very clear. Wherever we are and we're in the midst, we are always classified as the minority. Yes. And we're treated as such. So you have to understand the Gentiles were a people group as a minority amongst heathen nations. Okay? Keep going. And it says, and by a foolish nation. An unlearned nation. An right. unskilled nation. A nation that didn't know the customs. That's why they didn't have the, they didn't know the law. That's why right. Apostle Paul said, I didn't know sin till I knew the law. Right. But that's why he said, man, they do, they do live by the law, but not knowing they have to keep the law. Right. You know? And it says, and by a foolish nation, I will anger you. Yeah. And that, see the case of point they're arguing. Yep. You know? Yep. About this problem. Right. You know, about believers. Let's keep going. Verse, uh, Acts 15 and verse 3. I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 3. And it says, uh, they passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, mm -hmm. declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. Mm. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that the Most High had done with them. Right. They had to tell them face to face because going back, you have to understand there wasn't um, uh, uh, Insta message. There right. wasn't phone calls. You know, you, you didn't you couldn't send a text message and he receives it in a minute. They had to go to one another. OK, this is why even when you go into uh, the letters, when Paul was writing them, he had trusted individuals carry those letters to a specific destination. OK, he didn't just write to the Galatians and put it in a bottle and it went to Galatia and everybody right. in Galatia got to read it publicly. Right. It didn't work like that. And it says verse five, but there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So this is their opinion. Right. We believe that they need to be certain. Now, are we supposed to be circumcised? Yes. Yes. But th listen, 
when the Lord accepted Abraham, he wasn't circumcised yet. Right, right. That's what, look, let's go to it. Yeah, you, you got to get, but you do, you don't need to be, you don't need to, uh, me, uh, I can't talk to you until you're circumcised. Right. You know? For real. Uh, what's that? Genesis, um, 17. Yep. This is Jenna. Look, it goes into Allah shot. Um, let me see right here. Genesis 17. And, um, right here. It says, verse one, and when Abraham was 90 years old mm. and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty power. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Was mm. he was he circumcised at this moment? Mm -mm. No, no, no. See, so that that's why Apostle Paul was using Abraham in the later letters. Like, yo, you got to look, you got to think, you know, right? Because then when you go down, uh, he's saying, I'm going to establish my covenant with you. And then, um, where is it? Right here. Ver it, don't, it don't come about till 11, where he tells him, now I want you to circumcise. Right. See? So Abram wasn't even circumcised yet when the Lord chose him. Okay? Okay, let's keep going. I have a quick precept. Yep. This is Romans 4, verse 13 to verse 14 in the uh, NLT. Romans 4 and 13, it says, clearly... The Most High's promise to give the whole earth to Abraham and his descendants was based not on his obedience to Ooh, the Most High's law. There it is. And this is what was like now. This is what we're telling you. Like, hey, man, listen, if the, if you're of the elect, you're of the elect. It ain't whether you live by the law or not. Now, I'm not saying that the elect ain't going to have the law or be of the law, but you just pushing the law doesn't make them the elect. Right. That's the problem we have here. Right. Okay. And, it's, and it says, uh, on his obedience to the Most High's law, but on a right relationship with the Most High that comes by faith. Mm. If the Most High's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is not necessary and the promise is pointless. Wow. So faith, faith is the main ingredient, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. That's why it says for uh, uh, through grace, are you saved by faith? Yep. You know? That's it. But we're understanding why these statements were made. Or why these letters were written. Right. You know? Right. Let's keep going. So heading back to Acts 15 mm -hmm. and verse 6. And it says, And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, <clears throat> Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago the Most High made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Yeah, because Peter mm. was uh, involved, and Peter was the first one to meet uh, Cornelius. Yeah. After he was given the vision. Okay? So Cornelius is an Israelite. Keep going. And it says, and the most high was... See, because it's easy for them to just say the Gentiles is anyone else. All right. But look at how we're going in with precept and prophecy proven that these Gentiles are Israelites. Okay? That's right. And another thing... If the Gentiles aren't Israelites, why are these certain men of Judea talking with them? Right. When it says, Cornelius said, the Jews have no custom with us. You're not supposed to be sitting and talking with me. Right. So why would these Israelites be talking with non-Israelites if they have a custom not to talk to non-Israelites? Right. And why do they say in John in 7? Let me get that. He said, will he go amongst uh, the Gentiles? Oh, yeah. Look, yep. John 7 and 35 then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go that we should not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed ah, right. among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Who are the dispersed? Ooh, right. So when you go into this word dispersed, let's click on it. So they, this, see what we're finding out between the lines is there was a common notion or reality that was back then that majority of people fail to realize today. Meaning Israelites knew they had Israelites that weren't in Jerusalem, right. that weren't in Israel. The, for the word, look at this, for the word dis, uh, diaspora of Israelites dispersed amongst foreign nations. Mm. Look at that. That's it. Of Israelites dispersed among foreign nations. And that reminds me of the script that says, uh, was that James 1 and 1, it says, peace, greetings to the Israelites scattered abroad. Yep. You know? Yep. Amongst the Gentile nations. Yep. Now back in Acts 15... And eight, and the most high which knoweth the hearts bear them witness 
giving them the Holy Spirit. See, that was provoking Israel, law abiding Israelites to anger. Right. That they, they got an upgrade. Yeah. They just they didn't have to go to the temple. They didn't have to make a sacrifice. They didn't have to wear fringes. They didn't have to prove registry. They were given the Holy Spirit. Right. See? That's what made Jake mad because when you think about it, look at the requirements that we had to do. We had to clean this. You had to insert in that. Right. You had to offer this. You had to offer that. You had to give an offering for the priest. There was so much that went into uh, just communicating. You know, it wasn't faith. It was works. Right. You know? That's right. And it says. It's wash your feet. Did you right. give a peace offering? Does this it lamb got blemish? Right. There was all these checklists that they had to keep going to be even in the temple. Right. You know? It makes sense, right? And it says, verse 8, giving them the Holy Spirit even as he did unto us. Mm. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Yeah, because that's the Man. law of the stranger. Right, right. Remember, you were a stranger in Egypt. Right. That's all it is. That's right. So you got brothers and sisters. We not looking down on y'all. But what's funny is, in today's time, when it comes with Gentiles, with heathen, they look down at us. Oh, yeah. You know? That's right. They don't, make, they don't act like we're not equal to them. Right. That's why, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai, he, he uh, reconciled us back to Yahweh, and he broke down that wall of partition. Yep. Because it was a it was a time when, you know, Gentile Israelites, they weren't allowed in the temple, in the synagogues. Yeah. You know? Why? Because they, they didn't have registry. Right. They couldn't prove that they were Israelite on paper. Man. But Herod did. What about that? Herod was a, a, a practicing Jew, right. but he was a terror. He was right. a Edomite. He was a heathen. Right. But y'all allowed him to rebuild the temple. Oh, that was fucking okay, right? Right. See, I'm getting all excited. But you know what I mean? Because it gets, you get, you get uh, like, there's points that need to be made. Yeah. It's uh, hypocritical, man. Yeah. So Herod, Herod the Edomite can rebuild the temple and you could be in there holy and thou, but these Israelites that ain't practicing custom Israelites, they can't go in there. But you take Herod's money. Yeah, they damn sure will. They said they're going to come and take away our place. <laughs> yep. This, uh, back in Acts 15 and verse 10, it says, Now therefore, why tempt ye the Most High to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Meaning the law. That's right. Why are you going to put the law on our people that are now re-waking up to being the people and you're going to put a bond, put them in bondage again. Mm. This is why Yahweh Shai told the believers in, uh, what's that, John 8 and 32? Yes. This is John 8 and 32. It says, red letter, and ye shall, and you, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Ooh. See? Look, look, he said, but we are descendants of Abraham, they said. We have never been slaves to anyone. See how carnal they were? Wow, right, yeah. But they're slaves to the law. Right. He said, what do you mean you will be set free? Yahweh Shai, this is NLT. Yahweh Shai replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. Mm -hmm. A slave is not a permanent member of the family, Ooh. but a son is part of the family forever. That's why I was going into the free woman and the bond woman. Right, was that in Galatians. See? Right, right. See? Right. So if the son sets you free... You are truly free. Wow. Yes, I realize that you are descendants of Abraham, and yet some of you are trying to kill me because there's no room in your hearts for my message. Mm. I am telling you what I saw. I was with my father, you, but you are following the advice of your father. Uh. Look, look, our father's Abraham, they declared. No, Yahweh Shai replied, for if you were really the children of Abraham, you would follow his example. example. What was his example? Faith. Faith. That Faith. was his example. Faith, bro. Instead, you are trying to kill me because I told you the truth, which I heard from Yahweh. Abraham never did such a thing. No, you are imitating your real father. They replied, we aren't illegitimate children. Yahweh himself is our true father. Yahweh Shai told him, if Yahweh were your father, you would love me. Because I have come to you from Yahweh. I am not here on my own, but he sent me. Why can't you understand what I'm saying? It's because you can't even hear me. Wow. For you are the children of your father, the Ooh. devil. And, you're, and you love to do evil things he does. Yep. Exactly. Try to uh, trip you up in your words. Yep. All right. They accuse you. They bear false witness. 
See? Being the death adder. Yep. Yep. It says he was a murderer from the beginning because what they want to do, murder Yahweh Shai. He was a murderer from the beginning, Cain. He has always hated the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, it is consistent with his character mm. for he is a liar and the father of lies. Wow. See? And this is what Yahweh Shai had to deal with. Man. So what do you think the new believers was going through? What Apostle Paul was dealing with? This is when you actually read it. You see the evilness of our own people trying to stop the um, edification and spreading the news, the good news of Yahweh Shai. That's the good news. Yeah. The gospel. The gospel's the good news. The gospel ain't the gospel because we're in captivity. The gospel does let us know we're freed from the captivity of sin. We're freed from the captivity of heathen, and we're freed from the captivity of this flesh. That's right. That's right, man. Back in uh, Acts 15 and verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. This is Apostle Peter saying that. Right. This is Apostle Peter saying that. Right. The head of the church. Yes. Verse 11. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Will put us under grace. Yahweh Shai. That's right. Yahweh Shai put us under grace. Okay. It says we shall be saved mm. even as they. Wow. Who, who was the day? The, the, the Gentiles. Yep. The Israelite foreigners. The non custom practicing Israelites. Mm, I like how you, that's the better way to put it that's through the it. spirit. I like that. You know what I mean? Right. That's it. That's all it is. Because when you really go back, look, um, when you go into this, let's put um, uh, temple, service, uh, priesthood, um, uh, priesthood. Let's just let's put it in. Let's see what comes up. So you click here, you go here. See, look at all this service uh, work. Yep. Washing the feet, having the clothes, having the ephod, having the right incense, having the offering, having the shoe bread. All these things you must conduct. Putting blood on the right toe, the right. Do you know you got to put blood on your yeah. ear? That's a burden, bro. Put you know blood, not in just your ear lobe. Put blood on. Uh, look, right ear. See, see. Hold on, I'm the Esau doing. Uh, let's go like this. KJV. It's either toe or ear. See, yes. look, yep. it's the air. look at this. Moses put of the blood upon the tip of their right ear. So you got blood on your ear, blood on your feet, blood on the right. This put blood there. But this was all shat on what? Yahweh Shai's blood. Right. But no, you you know what? You don't want Yahweh Shai put dip your ear in blood. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, honestly, for real. Man. All right. OK, now back in uh, X. X 15 and verse 12. It says, then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul. Because they kept silence because Luke, let me get that, uh, Luke 21 and 15. Luke 21 and 15, uh, red letter. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, nor resist. resist. So the Lord, Yahweh Bashim al Shai, Bashim al Kakwadash, had to give us a certain. Uh, uh, a level mm -hmm. of inspiration through speech conveying this message unto our believers and non-believers to come together to believe collectively on Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rachakwadash. That's right. That's what this is about. Majority of our people just uh, praise Yahweh. You know. That's true. And it says, uh, verse twelve, and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring. What miracles and wonders the Most High have wrought among the Gentiles by them. Mm -hmm. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, men and brethren. So now Peter spoke, and now here come James speaking. Right. Authority. Right. The elders. Right. All right, there it says James judgment. Exactly. It says, men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon had declared how the Most High at the first did visit the Gentiles to Ooh, take. You got it. I'm excited. Oh, now we're getting it. Yeah. yeah. To take out of them a people mm. for his name. Mm. Who's that people? Israel. Who, right. Who's the people amongst the, the nations? You know, uh, uh, Israel. Right. That's why it says Israel is, is as the sands of the sea. You know, the Israelites scattered abroad. You know, the great despoiler. That's one of the curses, us being scattered. Right. And what other nation is is, is rising up through Yahweh, Bashima, Shia, Bashir, and Kakwadash, proclaiming to be the Israelites? Right. Only only so-called minorities, right? Yep. And Israelite foreigners. And it says, 
But you wanted, you had a point though, right? Yeah, we'll read that part again. To, yes. It said to take out of them a people for his name. Yes. So there's a, there's going back because we just said the Gentiles. At first it was the God fearing Gentiles. Right. Now these, the Gentiles he's only taken are ones that are set up to bear his name. Right. Now is Israel set up to bear his name? Yes. Absolutely. This is Deuteronomy 28 and verse 10. See, Ooh, we have precepts. Right. Right. Deuteronomy 28 and 10. All and all people of the earth, Gentiles, yes, and all nations of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Right there. Right there it says that Israel is called by the name of the Lord. What Ooh, you got, man? That's, that's fire, bro. I got a precept for you. Yeah. This is the book of Second Edges, um, chapter uh three and verse thirty-six. It says, thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts, but not the heathen. There you go. Come on, man. So so even Jake that is a heathen is now being pulled from the heathen. Right. Because they've always been set up to bear the name and not the heathen. They're, you're being told, you're not a heathen, bro. Right. You've been set up to bear the name of the Lord. You an Israelite. You're not one. Of, I'm not one of. No. Right. No, brother. But I don't got no fringes. That don't matter. Right. How many times we've had Israel like come up to us? We like, bro, we don't care. You ain't wearing fringes. Yeah. yeah. You're fine, bro. Yeah. You're fine. You're an Israelite. You're fine. Right. See? Because that's one thing too. The Lord's coming back to deliver spirits. Yeah. Not Jake's with fringes, huh? Yeah. I got one more, one more precept for you. Yep. Yeah. Same chapter, same book, Second Edges three and verse thirty four. It says, "Away thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance, and there is also that dwell in the world." And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. Mm. You see, so that alone proves that the only the, the uh, people that the Lord is dealing with is the nation of Israel. So even though Jake may be amongst the heathen, the Lord has the Lord ultimately is going to pull them out of those uh, of those heathen nations and, and choose his people. Right. That's why it says in Isaiah 14 and 1, he shall have mercy on Jacob, but yet choose Israel. Right. You know? Right. That's a good point. So uh, where were we? Back in Acts. Okay, back in Acts 15 and uh, 14, Simeon had declared how the Most High the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. So now we see that Israel is a people that bears his name. That's right. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return uh, and will build again the tabernacle of David. Mm. Which is fallen down and will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. So now James is using the prophecy that only surrounds the nation of Israel. Right. Keep going. And it says, verse 17, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. Boom. So right there, you got to tell, wait a minute, before you just say Gentiles, right. it's the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. Right. Okay. That's what this is all about. It ain't just any Gentile. It's upon whom my name is called. Right. And only Israel has been set up to bear the name of the Lord. Even if they're heathen or not, That's their right. lineage, their spirit goes back to being chosen to bear the name. That's why he said, Apostle Paul, who's a Benjamite, right. is a chosen vessel to bear my name. That's right. Why is Apostle Paul uh, um, bearing the name? Because he's an Israelite. Right. And he was chosen to bear it amongst the Gentiles that didn't know that they were Israelites. That's right, bro. And it says, uh, said the Lord who doeth all these things. 18. Known unto the Most High are all his works from the beginning of the world. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to the Most High. Wow. But that we write unto them. Oh, and then it also, um, when you go into uh, Amos 9, it goes into heathen. Oh, yes, yes. But those heathen are Israelites as well because... Israel has been called a heathen. Real quick. Uh, I think it's Ezekiel 36. So let's go to this real quick. Amos 9. I just did a lesson on this too. Uh, Amos 9. Okay, when you go down into it, the restoration of Israel, of the Apostle James, is using the prophecy surrounding the rebuilding of the house of David, who are Israelites. And even within that, look, um, it says, in that day, Will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, meaning uh, the southern and northern's 
uh, vexing and envying, he's going to take that away. Okay? Which no right. one cares about that. Christians all talk about all this salvation and blah, 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 but they don't talk about the restoration of the whole kingdom of Israel, right. which is the southern, the southern and northern kingdom coming together. Why don't they talk about that? Right. Christians do not care about the Lord's people. They only care about white looking Jew people that look like them. So I, I'm lucky to say it that blunt. But, hey, but, it's, but the it's true, truth, man. It's the truth, though. The they, truth they, they all care about each other because they have a Serapis Christus to call upon. That's right, man. Come on, you know? man. Nobody cares about it. That's why it says, who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? Who shall bemoan thee? Come on, man. Right. And it says, uh, and I will build it as the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom, that remnant meaning his land, because in Obadiah goes into, uh, the, the day of the south yes. shall possess Mount Seir. And it says, and of all the heathen which are called by my name. That's the Jakes. Those are Jakes. Yes. Those are Jakes. Come on, man. Look, let's put Israel. I think it's Ezekiel 20 and 26. Israel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. I'll look it up for you, too. Um, right here. Got call, it. Call Ezekiel up. 20 and 32. This is speaking about Israelites. And that which cometh into your Israelite mind shall not be at all that you Israelites say we will be as the heathen. Wow. See? Right there. See that? See that right there. So Israel has been called a heathen. Mm -hmm. They've been called Gentiles. They've been called bywords. And that's a part of the curses. Yes. Being called a Gentile is a part of the curses. Yeah. Uh, um, um, strangeness of face. Yeah. That, uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. Confusion um, of confusion face. Confusion of face. Yes. That means then you're a Gentile. Yes. It says, exactly. we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. And what did Apostle Paul say? What did it, it said, we will be of the heathens to, to what is it, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 2? No. Um, oh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 1. Thank you. That's what you're looking for. Carried away? Yes. Right here. Boom. 1 Corinthians 12 and 2. It says, ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye Red. were led. There you go. Right. That There it is. See? Ye were carried away unto dumb idols as Gentiles, heathens. And offering under dumb idols. Dumb idols meaning can't speak, right? Uh, see or talk, right? He's dumb. He can't speak, see or talk. Wood and stone. That's right. Can't see, speak or talk. Okay. That's right. And, and even when you go into the Book of Acts, the seventeenth chapter, it goes into how Jake was making idols of it. it was gold and silver. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But but those are Israelites making idols yep. because they're Gentiles. Yep. They were brought un, yeah. brought under up those. Those uh those those uh heathen customs. Yeah, exactly. AK, that's why they call Hellenistic Jews. That's why there was a Hellenistic age. Right. What's that? During the time of the Maccabeans. Time of the Greeks. Th thank you. Time of the Greeks. Yep. Thank you. Which then we would go to the Maccabees to prove right. how the Greeks Hellenized the Israelites. Right. Come on, man. You can't get around it. You gotta use the Hellenistic age. Use the Hellenistic age. This is all Hellenized. Then it was Romanized. Then they call it Westernized. Right. From Hellenized to it's Romanized to Westernized. Westernized. I like that, right? Okay? Very simple. But through the Holy Spirit, we keep driving this home. That's right. So, uh, I'm sorry, these make you pump sorry. Yes, back in Acts now? Yes. Because we didn't want to just skip over James quoting. Yeah. That's how Christians do. And James says, uh, the Ruby Bill, the house of David, and then <laughs> yep. the and all the Gentiles. Yep. Hold on, man. We got to talk about this. Right. You speaking too quick. Hmm. <laughs> Back in, oh, excuse me, uh, X. Back in X fifteen and in verse uh, twenty, it says, "But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols." Boom. Well, wait a minute. Christians are all dealing with idols. They wear the cross, which yep. that's Tammuz. They uh, reverence the Virgin Mary, where well, that's uh, Semiramis. That's the Queen of Heaven. Uh, they bow to a woman. They go in temples that were made for hands, but the Most High is not in them. They deal with graven images. What's up with that? Right. But everything I just said is in the, the southern and northern churches as well. Right. That's amongst Judah. That's amongst Ephraim. Especially Ephraim. Yep. It says, uh, uh, leave Ephraim alone. Because they're joined under idols. That's right. See? But So this is why he's telling them, look, and this is a part of the law. Christians say the law is done away with. Well, why is the Apostle James commanding that they um, abstain from idols and from fornications and from uh, things strangled and from blood? That's on the law. Remember, right. and the law says don't eat any meat with blood. Right. Yeah. That's on the law. He just gave commandments in the law, but not as in the law will save you. Right. But look, you being built up, coming back to your customs, refrain from these heathenistic 
uh, customs right. while you're on the journey following Yahweh Shai. Right. That's why Apostle Paul said we don't make void the law, nope. but we establish it. Right. But faith comes first. But we're not going to burden you right. with uh, no running, no jumping, no skipping, <laughs> no hopping, no all this. Bop, bop. Look, let me get you this. You see all those clothes in your closet? Throw them out. And if you don't throw them out, put a board of blue. And then after a board of blue, I want 613 fringes on every single piece of your garment. Damn, bro. Hold on. Hold on. Come on, man. See? That's the difference. See, this is sound advice. You got one coming down saying, if you don't live by law, you can't be saved. Mm -hmm. And then another brother saying, look, man, yeah, the Lord, the Lord is with us, but just refrain from this and that. Okay, just work on that and I'll, I'll see you in two days. Right. See? Back in Acts 15 and verse 20. So my yoke is easy. Yeah, right. Exactly. It says, and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him. Being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Right, like we're reading right now. We're reading right now on the Sabbath day. But what we're reading to you is nothing but Yahweh Shai. That's right. One of my favorite uh, precepts as of late. I believe it's 1 Corinthians uh, 2. Let me see. Yep, 1 Corinthians 2. Okay. And guess what, brothers? The only reason why we love going into this is because the Lord... Uh, created us to love this. That's right. First Corinthians two and two. For I decided that while I was with you, I would forget everything except Yahweh Shai Mashiach, that one who was crucified. Boom. So Apostle Paul said, when I came to talk with you, I put it on my mind to only speak about Yahweh Shai. That's right. You know, you see when brothers come to camp. Now, of course, if there's a pressing matter that something within the law can be addressed to help them, yeah, that's being brought up. But never to the level of if you um, are not keeping all the laws, then Yahweh Shai is none effect to you. Right. No, it's quite contrary. It's the opposite. If you are all about the law, he's of none effect to you. Nate, and let me just say this real, real quick. So you know how IEYC pushes that um, uh, we're under the new covenant? Yeah. Do you yeah. know that also under the new covenant says you will not teach your neighbor about the law or the Lord no more. Yes. But that's one of the biggest camps of Israel that teaches you about what? The law. The law, right. How are you teaching about the law and you're in the new covenant when the new covenant says you want to teach about the law? Right. Make it make sense. Right. That's a cut right there to them, to Let's themselves. Go, yep. Let's go back. Well, Yahweh Shai said, I'll visit you and I'll fight with you with my mouth. Oh, that's right. You know? This so is, we're, we're verbally fighting. That's right. Continuing the faith, man. Fighting. You know? You got it. Uh, back in Acts 15 in verse 22, then pleased it, uh, then pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with yep. Paul and Barnabas. Right. So right here, Antioch, second journey. Okay. Because they came from here. Mm. They're in Jerusalem. So now they're getting sent back out again. That's what makes them apostles. Right. They were sent. Okay. Not everyone is sent by Yahweh. Some are sent by Satan. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, it says false apostles. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's that? First Corinthians two. Yes. Um, and eleven. Yes. Because when you see Apostle Paul, you. yeah, he goes into that. Uh, yeah, false. Let me look. I got you, bro. False apostles. Yep. Second Corinthians eleven and thirteen. Thank you. Eleven. Uh, Second Corinthians. Yep. Eleven and verse thirteen. Oh, I got it right here. Okay. So I can. Second Corinthians eleven and thirteen KJV. Mm -hmm. and look! 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 Paul and the false apostles. Wow. See? That's what it says. For I, verse 2, I am jealous for you with the jealous, with the jealousy of Yahweh himself. I promised you as a pure bride. That's how we feel. Right. We feel, we feel jealous, you know, because the Lord put on our spirit to defend, point out, rebuke, warn. Stay away from that nigga, man. For real. Now we're not calling nobody a nigga, but it's as if you were the bride, we're warning you like a, a the best man would be right. for his best friend's bride. Make it be that nigga get away from my, my brother woman, man. All right, for real. What the fuck you doing, man? Excuse my language, you know? Yeah. That's how you feel. Hey, get away from them. All right. You know? That's right. I remember one time I caught an IUIC member crossing a busy street, the busy mean streets of Rochester, to give this beautiful black queen. A flyer duty. Remember right. he was on. I said, "You don't know if she's married." Right. He left. We, he left post to go crawl. He ran over there. He ran, bro. I'm a man. Come on, I'm man. A man. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't went around the aisle once or twice too. He he do a more to hand her a, a pamphlet. He, he was on a different flyer mission. Yeah. But my point was, he don't know if she's married. Right. You don't know if she got a man. 
but you out there using Christ to get to the core body. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Right, Let's go down man. to this, man. See, look, look. I may be unskilled as a speaker. We may so-called cuss. We may stutter. We may mispronunciate. Mm -hmm. But are we are we lying? Nope. But I didn't lie to you. I ain't a liar. Like you. you? <laughs> Come on, man. So going down real quick. Look, he's telling you how Hamashiach is in him. You know? That's right. Look, look, look. Look, look. It says, NLT, They're, these people are false apostles. Mm. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Hamashiach. So you got it right now. Shalom, we're Israel united in Christ. I am deacon of Christ. That's a false apostle, bro. Yeah. You better get away. You better get from around. Yeah. But I am not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. There you go. There you have it. Mm -mm -mm. Back in. Oh, did you want that Corinthians about the false prophets? Oh, no, that's the one I wanted. The, uh, I just read it in the NLT. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yep. Uh, back in uh, Acts 15 and verse uh, 22. And it says, Then please the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. So now the camp getting big. Yeah. Namely, Judas surnamed Barsabas and Silas, chief men among the brethren. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren, which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and uh, uh, Cilicia. Right, because they went right into the synagogue of Jews in Antioch. Right. They went right into the synagogue of Jews in Antioch. Let's put that in real quick. Let's put in uh, 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 synagogue, excuse me, synagogue of Jews in Antioch. Let's see what comes up. Look at that. What's this? Somebody come look at this. Mm -hmm. Look, 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 look. Synagogue of Jews in Antioch. Right. So they had to make sure they were they were writing to the synagogue of Israelites. Right. They were writing to the Israelites. They weren't in the synagogues. They were just being labeled as Gentiles. Right. See? See that? You gotta you gotta even understand uh when the letters were being sent out, those letters were uh specifically sent uh to a, to people. Yeah. How do you word it? Paul's letters. A uh, Paul's letters. Oh, I got you. How? There it is. And actually, too, bro. There's uh, you act. You have a uh, uh, Edomites. Well, you had this one Edomite. He uh, he um, he admitted that those uh, letters that was to Gentiles, those are Israelites. Yeah. Remember that video? Great video. Back? Mm -hmm. See, look at. So when you got like uh, last night or the night before. Vocab was talking to Captain Nazariak, and he was like, "Look, I just want to talk to you about Galatians. Wait a minute. Wait a minute." You can't go into Galatians because the letter to the Galatians was a letter to Israelites on the journey in the region of Galatia. Right. Okay. So when you look up, when you look it up, here's Galatia. That letter was to brothers in Derby, Lystria, Iconium, and Antioch. Okay. See that? See that? So you can't just say, I'm going to the, the letter of Galatians when you weren't a part of the people that he went to in Galatia. Right. And it was a private letter that was specifically to the men in the region of Galatia. OK, because you didn't just get to send uh, letters by mail like we do today, because the mailing system of the Roman Empire was called like Cursipus Publicus. And basically only Roman officials could use that postal line to send urgent message. So the, the letters that we're reading today were preserved by in particular chosen men to carry these letters and then read them aloud mm. to those men when they got there. That's a okay. cut right there, man. Yeah. Come on. Uh, let me see. You can't get around that. Yep. Oh, look, 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 look. But some Jews became jealous. Oh, wow. We just read that yeah. in Romans 10. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. See? And then when they got there, they'd read it aloud. They'd bring it out. They'd bring it out to the brothers. Hey, and make sure you see uh, Timotheus. And then when you get there, tell them that I said. Right. See? That's amazing, bro. But a Christian, uh, but a Christian will use that for himself. Right. You using love letters that ain't for you, my man. These love letter, these love letters was not directed to your address. All right. Let's keep going. Back in Acts 15 and verse 24. For as much as we have heard that certain that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words. Uh oh, doing what? It says, subverting your souls, mm. saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we commend, excuse me. To whom we give no such 
commandment. Let's go to Galatians 3. We're in That's a spirit, bro. We're right. At, right? Yes. Why are we not in the region of Galatia? Yes. So these men just went, look. Oh, foolish. Look, Galatians 3 and 1. Oh, foolish Galatians. That's what he's talking about. Yes. Who has bewitched you? Man, well, man, this guy in purple, he just, he was, he was <laughs> talking really good. Silly woman laden with inequity. You were felt so contrite and guilty of your sins that now instead of believing that Yahweh Shai, death 2,000 years ago, already forgave you for what your ass did in 93 with that starter jacket. Right. Now, you, right? <laughs> That's is. really when you really think about it. Jake is convicting them. They're, they're condemning themselves of something they did today, yesterday, two years ago, when your sins were already forgiven 2,000 years ago. Ooh. You don't even know what you did in your life past this in the past life before that right man so you're being bewitched yeah i know but just that gold fringe them man. black boots i just saw righteousness in there right and that's why men like that are a trap yep you know because because they don't lead you down to the path of yahweh shai no nope. they lead you path to a, a path of destruction and death yep you know yep and it i'm sorry you had a point yep. though real quick it said subverting yeah subverting yeah. yes um it says subverting your souls, right. saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we to whom we gave no such commandment. Right, right here, uh, perversion of the gospel, Galatians one and six. Wow. I marvel yeah. that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Hamashiach unto another gospel. What happened to you, bro? Right. What happened? But see how um, Acts, what you're reading, in Acts fifteen. Is lining up with Galatia, yes, because he went. He's speaking to the men in the region of Galatia, right? And right here also, the the uh, precepts to that is Galatians, see, the book of Galatians, there exactly. You know. So they can't use that because if they pull out a letter that Paul wrote, they need to also go into the account of Acts. That's right. Okay, so it says, um, what which is not another, but there be some. Uh, I just see a Jake uh, uh, holding his fringes like dangling them at you. <sighs> But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Amashiach, which means turn away. Mm. So they're turning our people away. Then you're going back. I got to make this quick point. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? Who's the truth? Yahweh Shai. Before whose eyes Yahweh Shai and Mashiach has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit by the work of the law or by hearing of faith? Wow. So he said, wait wow. a minute. Did you receive this, this spirit by the law? Or was it by the uh, hearing? Or it says, or by hearing of faith. Ooh. It was by hearing of faith. So then why do you think now that the righteousness comes by the works of the law when you enter this by the, by the hearing of faith? Wow. I learned I was an Israelite through the hearing of faith, not by the law. You know what I'm saying? Yes, by faith indeed. So let's go back. And it says, verse uh, 25. 24. Yep. I'm sorry. Yeah, 25. It yep. says, it seemed good unto us being assembled with the one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. But you got to protect the sheep. Got to. They're, that's why he said, after my departing, ravenous wolves will not spare the flock. Yep. They stay running through y'all, man. We're going to get in the kingdom. Well, it'll be forgotten. But you're going to find out like some horror stories. Oh, yeah. You know? You're going to find out some horror stories what these other Israelites done did to you. And it says, uh, men that have uh, hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach. Remember, uh, the, the apostles got beat up in Acts 5. Yeah. You know? Yep. It says, we have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. See, face to face. I need to come talk to you face to face. Right. It's a difference. You know? You have to. Fix your face Tuesdays. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, that's how you see's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For it seemed good to, to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden Ooh. than these necessary things. Perfect. That ye abstain from meats. Because they're newborn babes. Right. They're newborn babes. So they just desire the sincere milk where they can be built thereby. Is that 2 Peter 2? 2 Peter 2 and 1. Thank you. Let's grab that real quick. Which Peter's is... um. The Apostle Peter. Right. You know? Look, so... Oh, no. Uh, First Peter. Sorry. Okay. Well, First look, Peter, yeah, look. But there were false prophets among you. Look at that. 
See that? That's the spirit. Yeah, let's read that. Second Peter's 2 and 1, but there were also false prophets in Israel, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will cleverly teach destructive heresies and even deny the master who brought them. Wow. In this way, they will bring sudden destruction on themselves. See? Yep, that's it. There you go. So Apostle Peter was the defending um, Yahweh Shai, man. Uh, you said First Peter's? Yes. First Peter's 2 and, and I believe verse 1. Okay. First Peter's two and one. So get rid of all. I'm NLT. First, oh, it's NLT. Yes. Okay. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all deceit, hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech. Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk. That's right. So that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment. Ooh. There it is. That's right. There it is. Okay. Back in Acts. Beautiful. Back in Acts chapter fifteen and a verse. Um, 29, yep. that ye abstain from meats offered to idols. See, they they saying it again. Right. And from blood and from things strangled and from fornication. Because back then, you got to understand, the heathens that we were surrounded by were all into idolatry. Right. Like, even to this day, I think I mentioned it before, you can go to Chinese markets. Let's just look this up. Let me look this up. Don't let me get going on uh, the word Asia. Um, uh, you can, excuse me, you can uh, buy... Uh, you can buy skele skeleton bones in oops skeleton bones in Asian markets, which Asia ain't just uh, Moab. Okay, it's a continent, uh, which actually the Asia goes back to um, Greek. Okay, uh, you can buy skeleton bone in Asia markets for rituals. Let's see if that comes up. Let me see, China. Okay, so they just now illegalized it. Okay, let's see. Ritual bones. See, so you could... There's a... I can't remember... Oh, see, look, 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 look. China illegalized the bone trade in 2008, and this was one of the biggest final blows to supply the new bones to the market. Oh, my goodness. See? So Man. my point is... Okay? Look, popular Instagram selling human... See, my point is... Ritual bones, see? Wow. My point is... You have to understand in these regions where we were at, you had idol worship and uh, things offered literally to idols. Man. You know, so there was a lot of left-handed uh, worship going on that we as new believers had to be warned to abstain from. Right. You see? Because it was a spiritual fornication. Right. You know? You got to, there's certain things you put away coming in that yeah. you, you did not knowing. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. But the, make, the biggest important thing, though, is you got to be built up in faith. Right. First. First. Yeah. Okay. Like, I'll, I'll tell you something heavy. You got the Israelite coming by camp. Now, he may be smoking, and we know he's not supposed to be, but we're not going to tell him that the Lord ain't for him just because he is. He's got to be built up in Yahweh Shai that he can lean on Yahweh Shai to put that away. Yeah. You just get me that shit. Put that out. He's still got demons on him right. from that that he hasn't been able to rebuke. Yeah. So he can't do it again. Right. Yahweh Shai has got to literally be dealing with you for you to drop things cold turkey, man. Yes. That's right. Back in Acts 15 and verse uh, 29, and it says... And, uh, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well, fear ye well. So they're protecting them for the spiritual aspect, because that's all left-handed uh, witchcraft. Yeah. You know what I mean? that's It's witchcraft, but um, this is all left-handed worship. So this is protecting their spirit, so they don't right. get overcome by something. So a demon don't jump on that. Right. You know? The Christians don't go into that like that. Mm -mm. And we don't live by the law. We don't live by the law. Yeah. Even even these certain like you know groups they don't go into you know uh, you know real life and you know the spiritual battle and it's truth you know right. the, the better sweet right all they go into is the sweet you know yep. and the law and it says verse thirty so when they were dismissed and you'll have a few men in between that go into like this the battle the mental yeah you know and that's why the Lord ultimately he's gonna pull his elect out you know. Whoever the elect is, is going to be manifest, man. That's right. Okay. And he said, then you shall know who are my chosen, you know? And it says, verse 30, so when they were dismissed, they came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, they delivered the epistle. Boom. We just proved what we just say. How was the letters delivered? Right, we right. We just proved it. We just we just proved that right there. Right. The letter, how was Apostle Paul's uh, letters delivered? 
I can't remember which one I was in. Let's do this again. Um, how was uh, Paul's letter? We just proved it. Paul's letters, which I actually, let me go to this real quick. Let me go to, uh, let me go here. Cause I had looked it on my phone. I noticed sometimes the phone will give you, um, the phone will give you a, a different AI uh -huh. than Google's AI. Now, how do I get to the commentary? Let me get out of this. How do I go to that? I want to go to the channel itself. There oh, it like was. your direct channel? There it is. Yes. Right here. Right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right here. This is what yeah, we yeah. Check this out. Check this out. Apostle Paul sent his letters by having trusted associates, often fellow missionaries and companions, physically delivering them to the intended recipients who are Israelites. Thank you. As there was no postal service in his time, these couriers would carry the letter and read them aloud to the congregation upon arrival. See, that's why the reader is so important. Right. And the speaker is so important. Bring it out. Did it said. You know what right. I mean? You're getting the spirit. Yes, Look, right. uh, with notable examples included uh, Tychius, Tychius Phoebe, and Epaphrodus. Which is like my pronunciation, depending on the destination of the church. There you right. go. Right. I said depending on the destination of the church. See? Right. So these letters directly were sent to uh, an individual and then it was read to them. And then he may have went here and then read it again. Right. And then he read it again. That's just like today. Like, say if you get mail, it's not meant for your neighbor. It's meant for you directly. Yeah. Yep. So these letters are only meant for Israelites that in the, in the, the in New Testament are referred to as Gentiles yep. that were under heathen customs. There you go. Not heathens. Back in Acts 15 and in verse uh, 31. Yeah, read 30, that last line. Yes. Uh, it says, verse 30, uh, they delivered the epistle. Boom. So we just we just got the confirmation. That's it. So right there in the scriptures, it tells you who these letters went to. And it says, which when they had read, they, they rejoiced for the consolation. Mm. And Judas and Silas, being prophets also themselves, wow. exhorted the brethren with many words and confirmed them. Because the spirit was on them. And it said right. they were prophets. So they confirmed them. Look, the prophecy says it right here that uh, the light to the chat. That's you, man. Right. That's you. Look, at we under curses. Look at these Romans are over us. We lost our nationality, man. Right. And then look, Shiloh came. Now Shiloh came, man. And then now the virgin, that's Yahweh. The virgin, that was Mary. She was of marriageable age. She had Yahweh Shai. He's of the line of David. Right. That's the star. That's why in Romans 4, it says made under the uh, the law. That's right. To redeem them that were under, under the, the law. law. And they're like, and then when you hear it and you start kind of crying, you like, oh my God, this is for me. Right. Yes, bro, this is for you. But the guys in the purple, man, I'm fuck what they said. Right. You get upset. For real. I don't care what they said to you. They're lying, man. Right. They're lying to you. They're putting a the stumbling block in front of their brothers, man. Yeah. Even Remy said that. You're lying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, verse uh, 32. But isn't it beautiful, the context of this? Yeah. It, it, you can't... Listen, man. You can't tell me this ain't the truth. Right. You can't tell me this ain't the truth. We're literally reading it verbatim, pulling out information through the Rakaq Wadash that's linking right up to what we learned when we first learned we were Israelites, what we were told us. Everything's right here. That's right. Then they say, go look it up. So now we're looking it up and it, 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 just, it, it, it just blew up. Man, right there in our face, man, the whole time. And you're not going to find this in the Christian churches. No, but you'll find a black woman sweating and dancing. Oh, man. Acts 15 and 31. I'm sorry, 33. It says, And after they had tarried their space, they were let go in peace from the brethren unto the apostles, now, not, not to withstanding. Oh, because you got to think about all the battle, the spiritual battle that uh, the mm. new believers of Israelites were having. Remember, he said, Which one of you Israelite camps told his brother he ain't an Israelite? Oh, yeah. Man, yep. I didn't know if I was an Israelite. Someone right. just told me that the other day. Man, I just I just hope I'm at. What you mean? The mere fact that you hope you're an Israelite proves you're an Israelite. Right. Ain't, you know what I'm saying? And it says, Notwithstanding it, please Silas to abide there still. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. Mm. And some days after Paul had said unto Barnabas, Look, the second ministry. See that? Oh, wow, that's beautiful. And this one, the second ministry, man, we're about to, we're about to go from uh, Antioch to uh, uh, um, uh, Philippi, Thessalonica, yep. uh, Athens, Corinth. 
it, it's about Ephesians. It's about oh, to get yeah. real. Yep. It's about to get real. We on a journey right now. Right, because Paul's first ministry was in uh, Galatia, right? Yes, this started, region, yeah. right? But now he's about to go from here. I believe the Antioch they're in is right here. So then they're going to travel all the way through. They're going to land in Philippi, which Apostle Paul wrote to Philip, the book of Philippians, when he was locked up. Yes, he did. That's why he said, man, I'm in bonds, brother. Right. So he didn't write Philippians yet. It wasn't until his fourth journey, which is fourth journey, he didn't return. Right. So then he's going to go from, look, Berea. But there's Thessalonica. See, we don't got a book of Berea. We no. got a book of Thessalonica, which is the book of the uh, Thessalonians. Yep. Then he goes down to, to Athens, goes into, uh, we're in Greece right now. We're, well, we'll be going to Greece. Right. This is Macedonia. Right. This Edomville. That's like, what's that? Right, yeah, that whole, that whole region. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mind you, the Romans are in power. And it says, uh, Acts 15 and verse 36. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. Oh, it says, um, notice stay that I flock. Right. He got to notice how they doing. How are you, right. I can't call you. I can only pray. I can only have faith. I have no other way to contact you but physically showing up or physically sending a letter by a trusted brother. That's right. It says, verse 37, and Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, uh, Pamphylia. which Pamphylia is right around here, right around this area. Oh, yes. Yep. And and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them. Yeah, some brother might have more of a zeal or more fiery than others at that moment. Right. But that doesn't change Mark's position because Mark comes back um, on the journey with Paul later on. Right. Yep. That's right. The it's, Lord wanted him to go here. The Lord wanted him to go there. That's right. It's the Lord's movie. That's right. It says uh, that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of the Most High Yahweh. And he went through Syria and, and Cilicia yeah. confirming the churches. Which is right around here. So they're getting ready to take yep. off. That's right. They're getting, so they went to, uh, what did it say, Cyprus? Yes. I believe this is Cyprus because that's Crete, which Timothy's in Crete. We haven't got there yet because next chapter, I believe that's when uh, Timotheus gets uh, mentioned. Yeah, chapter 16. Okay, yep. beautiful. All right, so we're going to leave it there. All right, we're going to leave it there. We pray that um, this uh, uh, this weekly act sit down, chapter 15, was edifying. It was enlightening. You know, it brought more context mm. to what you're reading, you know, and understanding that we have, knowing through faith that we do have and bear the truth. Okay? And uh, we just want to say, call Allah, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. We'd also like to give double honors to our elders and apostles of Great Millstone that do well. And we'd like to say peace and salutations to the Lord's elect. With that being said, Shalom. Shalom.